Hello and welcome. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Gargi Rawat. Up ahead, all the news you need to follow. Also, Ganesh Chaturthi. A celebration begin from today, two years after the pandemic. Big celebrations this time. Right, Gargi. Ten days of celebrations that start today. I'm Divya Vada. We'll get you all those celebrations as well as the top political and international developments. Let's take a look at the headlines first. At a midnight hearing, the Karnataka High Court has allowed Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations today on an Eidga ground in Hubli as the land belongs to the corporation. Now, the Supreme Court had earlier ordered status quo at the Bengaluru Eidga. Jharkhand's ruling uh, JMM uh, Congress coalition moves its MLAs to neighbouring Congress ruled Chhattisgarh after alleged poaching attempts by the BJP has no decision by the governor on the CM's fate yet. The BJP has suspended its Jharkhand leader Seema Patra, made allegations that she confined her household help and brutally tortured her. And Mikhail uh, Gorbachev, uh, the Soviet leader who ended the Cold War under whom the USSR dissolved, has died at the age of 91. And Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations after two years of the pandemic, the 10 day long festivities have begun. Well, our top story now, Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations on an Eidga ground in Karnataka can proceed as planned. The High Court has said, turning down a petition filed after the Supreme Court had ordered a freeze in the case of the Bengaluru Eidga Maidan. Right, uh, Gargi, in a midnight hearing, the High Court said the serious dispute over the ownership in a case of uh, the Bengaluru Eidga land uh, does not exist in the Hubli case. So the order of the Supreme Court is not applicable is what was said in court. Right. The decision to hold the Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations on these, uh, in this Eidga grounds in Hubli was taken by the local civic body earlier on Tuesday. The petition in the High Court was then filed by the anjuman -e islam after the Supreme Court ordered a status quo in the case of the proposed uh, celebrations on the Eidga land in Bengaluru. Uh, so in Hubli, it was allowed as the land is owned by the corporation. Let's go across to Shrija now for more. And Shrija, so these are two different cases, one involving the Eidga land in Bengaluru where the Supreme Court ordered status quo. So no uh, Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations there. However, the Hubli land uh, is owned by the corporation. So the High Court allowed this, this to go ahead and that too in a midnight hearing. Um, yes, as far as this particular case is concerned, which is the Eidga Maidan in Bengaluru, we see that the Supreme Court has ordered a status quo. In fact, uh, the Supreme Court did, of course, remark saying that for the last 200 years, no such celebrations have taken place on the Eidga Maidan ground. This is in Bengaluru. And also, uh, uh, it is important to note that they have referred, especially the Apex Court has referred the case back to the Karnataka High Court, which means the Karnataka High Court will now have to adjudicate the claim or the ownership rights. Now, that would take for a very, very long time because it's already disputed at this moment. Now, as far as Hubli is concerned, uh, right after the Supreme Court had ordered the status quo, the petitioners once again moved here, uh, the Supreme Court, uh, I beg your pardon, the High Court in Karnataka, and in hope that they would receive an interim relief. However, the Karnataka High Court uh, did remark saying that since there is no dispute with regard to the ownership rights and it is very clear that the uh, the land belongs to the municipal corporation, hence, uh, you know, uh, the, it is left up to the discretion of the municipal corporation to decide what exactly they want to do uh, uh, with it or they can take an appropriate decision. So as we speak, we see the Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations have already started at uh, the Eidga Maidan grounds in Hubli. And uh, the entire place, the playground, has now turned into a huge fortress because uh, additional forces have been deployed now. Police security has been stepped up. This could be the first time that we're going to witness a Ganesh Chaturthi celebration, especially on Eidga Maidan grounds in Hubli district. All right, and a huge amount of security there as well. Uh, thanks so much, Shrita, for joining us uh, with those details.
Now a case from Telangana and a horrific case in a botched up family planning operation that took place on the 25th of August. Four women out of 34 who underwent female sterilization procedure uh, called a double puncture laparoscopy have died. The incident took place in the civil hospital in Ibrahim Patnam. Right, uh, Gargi Telangana's public health director has ordered an inquiry and nine women have been shifted to Hyderabad's hospital for observation. The State Human Rights Commission has also now sought a report uh, by October 10th. So a horrific case, uh, one involving uh, uh, family planning and sterilization, mass operations, and now four women out of 34 who underwent the operation have died. Other women have also been uh, shifted uh, to hospital for uh, more uh, observation. Right, uh, Gargi taken to other hospitals uh, in order to, uh, in fact, uh, due to that incident that's taken place. Right, we'll get you uh, more developments and reactions to that. But moving on to news uh, from Jharkhand now. And Jharkhand's ruling JMM uh, Congress coalition has moved its MLAs to neighboring Congress led Chhattisgarh uh, this after alleged poaching attempts by the BJP. Exactly, uh, Gargi. Now, sources are saying that MLAs are in fact being lodged at the Mayfair Resort in Raipur. This, as the uncertainty continues with the governor not taking any decision yet as far as the CM's fate is concerned. जो बिकने के लिए भी खड़े हो जाते हैं कुछ ऐसे भी हैं जो नहीं बिकते हैं जो पकड़े गए वो मुसीबत में जो ना पकड़े गए वो वहां बल्ले बल्ले उनकी रिटर्न ऑफ रिजॉर्ट पॉलिटिक्स एमएलएज ऑफ द रूलिंग जेएमएम कांग्रेस अलायंस इन झारखंड फ्लाइंग आउट टू रायपुर इन अ कांग्रेस गवर्न स्टेट अमिड्स फियर्स ऑफ हॉर्स ट्रेडिंग ऑफ एमएलएज it's been six days since the election commission, according to sources, recommended the chief minister be disqualified as an MLA over allotting a mining lease to himself while in office. Soren will have to resign. The governor is yet to decide when the sword should fall. The ruling alliance fears another play out of Operation Kamal, where the BJP managed to split or topple the opposition governments in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, among other states. The four-party alliance has a majority of eight in the 81-member assembly. ये कोई कौन सा बने आश्चर्यचकित और नया परिपाटी नहीं है और ना ही कुछ कानूनी होने जा रहा है हर परिस्थिति अरे यार क्या कर रहे हो भाई मेरा हाथ कौन दबा रहे हैं भाई का सामना करने के लिए सत्ता पर तैयार देखिए कोई नई बात नहीं है आज तमाम राज्यों के बारे में अगर हम चर्चा कर लें तो जिस प्रकार से चुनी हुई गैर भाजपा शासित प्रदेश की सरकारों को लोकतांत्रिक तरीके से चुनी हुई सरकार जनता के द्वारा चुनी हुई सरकारों को अपदस्थ करने के हर मुमकिन प्रयास किए जा रहे हैं तो उसको लेकर के एक रणनीतिक हमारी इसको मूव कह सकते हैं कानून अपना काम कर रहे हैं और कानून पर सबको आस्था रखना चाहिए भारत के हर नागरिक को इसलिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी कहीं नहीं है कानून अपना काम कर रहे लीगल एक्सपर्ट से अंडर द लॉ चीफ मिनिस्टर हेमंत सोरेन कैन ओनली बी डिस्कालीफाइड एंड नॉट डिबार्ड फ्रॉम कॉन्टेस्टिंग इलेक्शन व्हिच लीव्स हिम विद रूम टू मनूवर आउट ऑफ दिस पॉलिटिकल क्राइसिस द सोरेन गवर्नमेंट अलेजेस दैट द गवर्नर्स रिलेक्टेंस टू एक्ट ऑन द इलेक्शन कमीशन रिकमेंडेशंस इज अ टैक्टिक टू क्रिएट इनस्टेबिलिटी इन द स्टेट टू डिले एंड ब्रिंग डाउन अ डेमोक्रेटिकली इलेक्टेड गवर्नमेंट in a non bjp ruled state by poaching mlas from the ruling dispensation with hariban sharma in rachi saurabh gupta and ttd now staying with news of from jharkhand the bjp leader seema patra has been suspended this after she has been accused of torturing her domestic help by keeping her imprisoned uh, for 8 years the matter came to light after a man informed the police and the police then raided her home and rescued this lady from her misery uh, right, uh, Gargi, uh, Ms. Uh, Patra was a member of the National Working Committee of the BJP's uh, Women Wing. The tribal woman uh, who was tortured has been identified as Sunita Khaka and she was allegedly forced to lick the floor with her tongue. Sunita, now 29, is from uh, uh, Jharkhand as well and was employed by the Patras about uh, 10 years ago. She also claims that she was hit with an iron rod. Uh, this is an iron walk, uh, leaving scars on her body and her teeth were broken due to repeated beatings.
Now, this incident reported uh, from Rachi and the police say that a case will be registered after a statement of the victim is recorded and the victim is currently undergoing treatment at the state-run uh, RIMS in Rachi. So a police uh, statement has not been taken yet but her video uh, of her ordeal went viral yesterday. A tribal woman who claimed that she has been tortured uh, by this BJP leader who has now been suspended after these accusations emerged. <laughs> all right absolutely heart rending you know to see that video and now as we said the bjp leader has been suspended though the police is yet to investigate these charges once they can take a statement uh, from her as well. eight years of being tortured like that and she had to be rescued uh, from there well, moving on to political news now, and Gulam Nabi Azad, who quit the Congress on Friday, met with three party leaders uh, who were a part of the G23 grouping or the group of dissenters, Anand Sharma, Prithvi Chavan, and Bhupender Hudda, and uh, he, to explain his reasons. Right, this as a large number of uh, Jammu and Kashmir Congress leaders quit the party to join Gulam Nabi Azad, who has alleged that the Congress president polls will be a sham to install a puppet president. But now speculations are growing that Shashi Tharoor may be the one in fact contesting. Days after Gulam Nabi Azad's bombshell resignation from the Congress, now Shashi Tharoor may throw his hat in the ring for the Congress president's post. Sources say the Kerala MP is considering contesting. In a newspaper article, Tarur has welcomed the idea of an internal elections, but for now is not saying more. People are free to speculate as they like. All I've written in my article is that elections are a good thing for the party. A democratic um, country like ours needs to have democratic political parties, and I welcome the fact that the Congress party has announced an election and is going to be conducting it openly and freely and fairly, and I think that's a very healthy practice. In Delhi, senior Congress leaders Bupenda Hudda, Anand Sharma and Prithvi Chavan met Azad to ask him why he left even after elections to the party's top post had been called. Mr. Chavan claims the Gandhis are opting out of the race. Meanwhile, in Jammu, there were mass resignations by key Congress leaders in support of Gulam Nabi Azad. Tara Chand, former JNK Deputy Chief Minister, is among over 60 Congress leaders who submitted their resignation today. The defectors say they have convinced Azad to float a new party as the Congress High Command failed to provide leadership. It is a crisis for the Congress like there were before in Jammu and Kashmir. Azad has literally taken the party away with him in the region. His supporters claim that people from other parties are also in contact with them to join Azad. The Congress, however, remained unfazed by the exodus and said it was preparing for its big massive rally against rising prices and the Bharat Jodo Yatra in early September. That all these things people are trying to do so that we should not ask questions to the Modi government. We are not going to escape you by your 3D policy of diversion, distraction and distortion. All eyes are now on the October election for the Congress President's post. Will it throw up any surprises? With Nasir Musudi, Sunil Prabhu, NDTV. All right, now the new Chief Justice of India, uh, Uday Umesh Lalit, on Tuesday drew the framework for the working of the constitution, constitution benches in the Supreme Court and said benches would preside every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday to hear matters pertaining to constitutional validities. Right, uh, Gargi, the Chief Justice of India is laying down a diagram of hearings saying that, that the Constitution bench would be sitting for three days a week and that they'll be holding around seven and a half hours of hearings a week and that is to aim at completing one case per week.
All right, so the Chief Justice really hitting the ground running and, you know, with a plan in place uh, to have uh, these uh, hearings taking place on at least three days a week. Now, returning uh, to the horrific case from Telangana, where a botched up family planning operation that took place on the 25th of August, in which uh, four women who underwent uh, sterilization out of 34 have actually died. Kargi, very, very tragic news coming in. Uh, they went through this uh, procedure, which is called, in fact, uh, double puncture laparoscopy or DPL. And those are the women who have died. The incident happened at the civil hospital in Ibrahim uh, Patnam. And we have our colleague uh, Uma joining us to get us more details on this. Right, Uma, if you could tell us, this was a mass uh, operation, one of those family planning camps. And, and, and out of this, now four women have died. Yes, indeed, Gargi. This is a very uh, worrisome inc uh, incident that's happened on the 25th of August. And uh, in fact, it was on uh, uh, the uh, public health director, Dr. Srinivas Rao, has now ordered an inquiry to find out why exactly this has happened. Nine of those women, uh, other than the four who died, have in fact been shifted to hospitals in Hajbat uh, for observation. And uh, what exactly happened, not yet clear, but uh, tensions clearly running very high in the area because... Uh, this is something that uh, people are convinced is good thing for them and therefore, uh, you know, they are kind of counseled and taken into these operations. And these are perfectly healthy women who have given birth to children who may have decided that they will not have, uh, do not want to have any more children. And that's the reason they opt for this procedure, which is um, obviously not something that is medically required, but they do it in the interest of uh, keeping their family size limited. As you know, uh, Gargi, uh, in India, in fact, uh, 98% of the uh, sterilizations that happen uh, for family planning happen uh, targeting women and in this case as well uh, women and there have been protests in the area following uh, the botch up that's happened and the lives that have been lost, tensions running high. Even the uh, you know team that went in to give compensation to the families that lost uh, uh, the women, uh, they were in fact attacked and uh, uh, they had to be in fact uh, taken away very quickly uh, to safety. So. Uh, the administration trying to explain to the people that something has gone wrong and people will pay the price. The civil hospital uh, superintendent, in fact, has been suspended for the time being. Uma, the State Human Rights Commission has ordered uh, an inquiry and a report uh, by the 10th of October. Yes, indeed. This is something that has uh, larger implications because, uh, you know, safety of women undergoing these kind of procedures and much more importantly, the uh, faith in the public health system, that's something that uh, the government cannot afford to have shaken at all. And therefore, uh, they have uh, instituted this inquiry, which will uh, hopefully get to the bottom of this. What really went wrong? Was there uh, any kind of, a, um, you know, uh, uh, disposables that were used that had some kind of an infection because of which these deaths happened? Uh, the doctor also under uh, suspension and inquiry, the person who carried out these uh, surgeries. But of course, the state government will also have to answer the State Human Rights Commission in this case by the 10th of October. Right, Uman, a huge setback to, you know, any sort of family planning, uh, activity, counselling in that area. And this is not the first time this has happened in India, if I remember correctly, Uma, a few years ago in Chhattisgarh as well, there was this massive uh, family planning camp in which again women were sterilised and at that time I, I think around 10 to 11 women had died. Uh, so this is an issue, you know, post-operative care, all these issues come into it and uh, again... I, an inquiry is going to be held into this one as well. Yes, indeed. The government usually take uh, these vaccination drives and the family planning drives very seriously because any kind of a watch up or any kind of a uh, uh, you know, something going wrong really sets back the program uh, tremendously because public faith gets uh, shaken and that's the reason why uh, they would be very uh, uh, concerned about what has happened other than the fact that of course this is very very serious that four lives have been uh, lost uh, post this operation and they have all been uh, linked to the surgery that happened and possibly an infection or something else that happened during the operation because of which uh, these deaths have happened. Uh, uh, I would not say they occur commonly. These are rare occurrences, of course, uh, that right. a family planning operation uh, goes wrong. But uh, getting to the bottom of it is uh, uh, right now very, very important so that uh, public you know, faith in the, uh, you know, these kind of uh, camps that happen or surgeries that happen, which have very often come in for criticism because uh, targeting women for family planning is something that's uh, been criticized, uh, family, uh, you know, uh, as, a, as a measure. And right now, 
the kind of figures that we have for, for the population growth may not warrant something like this. But these are options that are given to people so that they can contain their family size. And something like this going wrong in a government hospital is certainly a matter of big concern. And finally, Uma, we're seeing visuals of, you know, a, a huge crowd has gathered. People are speaking, lots of women and men are sitting there. As you said, there is a, a, some amount of anger and tension in the area. Yes, indeed. Uh, there are political parties and leaders who, uh, who you know, with, who kind of uh, help organize these kind of protests. Of course, they also uh, vent the public anger in that area because they require answers and there is anger after the death of four women uh, uh, in the opera surgery that happened on the 25th of uh, August. So uh, the local administration and the ministers trying to assuage uh, people and tell them that, uh, yes, something has wrong, gone wrong and uh, action will be taken suitably for this. All right, uh, Uma, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, with that so horrific case there, four women died after a sterilization camp that was held in that area, Ibrahim uh, Patnam in Telangana. Nine women have been shifted to a hospital as well. And as you can see, some anger and tension in the area. Right, uh, Gargi, four uh, women have died. Nine, like you said, have uh, been shifted to other hospitals. And a lot of people that are sitting in protests uh, questioning as to what's uh, gone wrong and how uh, that incident uh, took place. With that, that was sipping the very short break. Lots more coming up on the other side.